Um, the person's name is Matty D, I think, right? Matty D, there we go. Yeah, Matty D. So big up Matty D. They put together this really great video called What Went Wrong, Bread and Shaw. We'll watch a bit of it because he features your boy in it. So big up Matty D for featuring me in the video. I appreciate him. Check out his channel. That's his channel there, Matty D, What Went Wrong a new commentator um, on the old Bapperverse stuff. And guess what? A fellow Englishman, a fellow British guy, mate, a fellow British guy. Let's check him out. Let's check him out. Let's check out, man. Let's check out the mandem. Let's see what the mandem are saying, innit? Let's see what the mandem are saying. Still, we got Matty D. <clears throat> some honest reflection and ask ourselves how on earth did brendan end up in this mess one key observation that i've noticed is that whenever brendan seems to be in trouble it's always his fault i feel like most of the problems that he faces can be traced back to his own actions <laughs> Dicey, dicey. The key point here is that Brendan seems to keep making avoidable mistakes. And one of the mistakes that I've noticed that he's been making over the years is his very poor response to criticism and the hate online. And by online hate, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the fighter and the kids subreddit. Uh, it's plain and simple, really. Brendan just needs to ignore the noise. Mm. He needs to block out all the little gremlins and the keyboard warriors who are commenting and leaving hateful stuff on there because it's not doing brendan any good and him look you know what that's actually a good point right he does spend an all he, he doesn't really spend much time talking about his fans or like directly servicing his fans it's always i feel like his whole entire existence is like predicated on like proving the haters wrong proving it proving the doubt is wrong Whereas his fans should be the ones you should be focusing on. Like, how can I give my fans the best possible product, the best possible content, the best, the best of me? Even the quit, even the quitting of the stand up. I don't think he mentioned anything. Oh, you're a big up. Um, I think it's high def, right? Are you regretting being a fake man? You fan that has no. Fuck going off! To fuck off! League. Fuck off! Fuck off! High def. Fuck off. How dare you suggest that I'm a fake Man United fan? And secondly, fuck off about me being worried that Arsenal are going to win the league. I don't care. I'm a nihilist United fan. I'm a cynical United fan. I don't give a fuck about any other team about Man United. I could care less if City win the league 10 times in a row. I want us to do better. I want the Glazers to fucking, you know maybe for their helicopter to crush in the side of a mountain somewhere so that we can be rid of their ownership. Ha, he, he, I'm joking, allegedly. Um, I want, you know, half of the players gone and contracts terminated immediately. Um, I want our bald fraud of a manager to be fucking ran over by a bicycler when he's fucking on the way to work and he breaks his leg so he can't walk into work. Ha, he, he, allegedly, I'm joking. Like, that's what I want. I don't give a fuck about any other team. I don't care. All I care about is United. And at the moment, United are fucking pissing me off. Just the other game, the last fucking on Sunday, look what fucking happened. Did you see us play the other day against fucking Liverpool? You think I'm worried about fucking Arsenal when we're playing at home and we're fucking not able to score just to have one shot on bloody target? Come on, bro. Don't try me like that, man. I don't care. Okay? I know I sound like I care right now because I sound like I'm about to cry, but I don't care. <laughs> I know I sound like I care right now, but I don't care. No, but big up you, High Def. Appreciate you, brother. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. I feel like my voice is about to break there. Like, it's go bad. Anyway, um, going back to this, I love what Matty D said here because I feel like I don't even remember Brendan. Did he Brendan even mention his fans when he quit stand up? When he did that whole speech about, oh, I'm leaving. I want to do a different thing. Blah blah blah. Did he even mention like? Did he even say sorry to the fans? I'm not sure if he did, you know. I'm not sure if he even said sorry to the fans. So there's never really an acknowledgement of his fan base. It's always just like about him and about proving that the, 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 the hate is wrong, really. It's a strange relationship he has with them. Looking at it and responding to it only gets him in more trouble. He should really take some advice from Joe Rogan. As, as I'm aware, I don't think the guy looks at... Look at that. Look at that smile. Look at that smile. Brogan, Brendan doesn't even look at his own wife like that. Look how happy he is. Honestly, it always makes me like, it fills me with joy when I see the way Brendan used to smile at Rogan back in the day. That is pure love. Like, you made me. You gave me this career. 
Without you, I probably wouldn't drive a Ferrari. I've owned Porsches because of you. I have a mansion because of you. I have a baddie of a wife who I allegedly cheat on every single day because of you. I have fucking little bambinos, right? Little critters, right? Little chombies because of you who are making my own image. Joe, I love you. Joe, I love you. Look at that face. Any comments, whether they're good, whether they're bad, because if it's not in your head, if you're not even seeing it in the first place, then it's not playing on your mind. I am on nowhere near the same level of popularity as Brendan, but I know personally <laughs> that if I listened to every hateful comment or every stupid thing that somebody commented on one of the videos, I probably wouldn't be posting YouTube videos. I probably... No, it's not even about that. Honestly, I don't think it's about not listening to what people say. Just about not caring. Like, I think we need to get to a place in life where we decide. No, we need to get a place. We need to get to a place in society where we start to understand and accept the internet for what it is. The internet is going to be full of people who just say shit for the sake of saying shit. And there's going to be people on the internet who also don't like you because they just don't like you. And there's nothing you can do to turn them around. That's perfectly fine. As long as there's nothing too crazy, they can say what the fuck they want to you. It's not your business to be like, I'm not going to read this because... Of no, 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 no. The internet is a wild, wild west for a reason. That's why we fucking love it. Because of the chaos factor, because of the unpredictability, because everybody on here, myself included, probably has an undiagnosed mental health issue. That's why I'm sat here in this room or allegedly in the basement with my hands covered in Cheeto dust, ran into you into a fucking $20 mic microphone and a fucking $10 fucking USB mic or USB fucking webcam. It's fucking redacted. We shouldn't be doing this. We all have better things to do with our lives, but we're here anyway. There's clearly something wrong with us. Then there's, some, then there's other people who go and leave comments just to troll just to trigger just to whatever it is what it is leave them that's okay it's all part of, it's all part and part of the it's all part and parcel of being online if you're willing to accept people sucking you off and saying how great you are you should also be willing to people to say hey your nose looks weird why are your eyes so spaced out what's that spot on your head what's that jacket what's that hat why are your hands look like that like you should be okay with people saying that because it's just the internet I feel like for nowadays, Brendan's another good example of it. He wants to fucking nerf the internet. He wants the internet to be like all sunshine and rainbows. It's never going to be that. And even more so, you know, I'm, I'm going to end this rant with, I don't understand people who get so like sensitive and so easily affected by comments online, especially people who have the most opinionated things to say, who are the most divisive personalities. You should know of all people, if you have a very opinionated stance on loads of things, if you're a contrarian, if you just have a very unlikable personality, you should know from, you should be the one person that should know how the internet moves and how you're not going to be everyone's cup of tea. That should be part of your brand. You should maybe lean into it a little bit, not try and nerf the fucking internet. Like read the comments. It's okay. Just don't let them get to you because they're just fucking comments. It's not a big deal probably would stop i'd call it quits and if i listened to everybody and every negative response i'd quite literally go cuckoo i would go crazy when it comes to comments and hates online mm. ignoring it is always easier said than done but without a doubt in almost every situation it always leaves you better off another i don't say ignore i say read just don't take it personally it's not that big of a deal because like i don't know about you guys but some maybe you got bullied in school did that stop you from going to school you might not have wanted to go, but you still found a way to go to school. Same thing with this. Like, it's not that big of a deal. It really isn't. The problem that I've uh, noticed, which I haven't seen addressed outrightly, or maybe it's just the way that I'm saying it, is Brendan's lack of authenticity. This is more to do with the reasons why so many people hate him. But the main problem with Brendan, in my opinion anyway, is that when you watch Brendan, sorry, you don't know what version you're gonna get of him. And that's because when I look at Brendan in, you know, it could be the Joe Rogan experience, it could be on his own show, it could be on, you know, it could be on whatever. He just looks very uncomfortable in himself. And I noticed this, especially in the presence of Rogan's boys, he just looks out of place. And I don't mm -hmm. think he feels very comfortable. And I think that's, when we start getting the inauthentic uh contradictory version of brendan because i think on camera i don't know what it is maybe he just doesn't really know who he is that's a good point because that's why we get all these different versions we get bike club brendan running brendan weightlifting brendan coffee brendan whiskey brendan right now we've got this like what working class blue collar pickup truck salt of the earth brendan right we get all these different versions of it which is really odd considering he's a he, he's doing all this in his 30s so he's mid 40s it's fucking redacted as fuck 
but you i think the best or the truest version of brendan we saw was those first episodes those early episodes of the fire and the kid when it was just him and brian just shooting the shit brendan just trying to be funny have a laugh with his friend like they were they were actually friends brian trying to make this big oath of a guy laugh that's when they were actually quite real and authentic his was anyway because that's when he was still a bit more of a meathead right but then when he started to transition into being a as expert in his field and he started to think he was like a an expert level fucking marketing genius or something expert level commentator podcaster that's when it changed and that's when he started to probably not figure out who he was and started to go a bit haywire but those early episodes of fire and the kids were definitely the the most um what you call it the most authentic brendan we saw i understand that you need to play to the camera and make things entertaining Otherwise, people aren't going to watch. It's as simple as that, right? And you see, when he's playing up to the camera and all of these lies and all these contradictory behaviours. That's a good point, Brandon. Can't wait for the cooking, his cooking channel. I'm actually interested to see what the next grift is. Well, I don't know. What, what did I guess it last time? I guess something else. Oh, I guess last time it'll be guns. Last time I said it would be guns. I think that's the next grift he might get into. Guns or the only other thing I was thinking about other than guns maybe he might get into um what's it called is it called traeger the brand that makes those um barbecue things that everyone gets everyone gets um, excited over in america right maybe he might start getting into barbecue and stuff he might be one of those barbecue guys and he might start you know doing all those videos on huge on instagram about oh look look how easily the, mo f the meat feels off falls off the bone how to marinate what stuff do you use wood you use charcoal I think that's the vibe. So my guess is after this pickup truck gift will be guns or um or thingamajiggy or barbecue. He might be a barbecue guy. That's my thing. The only other thing I can think of after that is uh beer. Maybe he starts to be like a craft beer guy. He starts to do like home brewing and shit. Which I don't think so because he's obviously he, he's an Ozempic. And when you're an Ozempic, it kind of allegedly some one of the side effects is it kind of stops some of your other um, addictions and cravings. And that's why he's not eating as badly and he's not drinking as much booze as he was in the past because he clearly is on the Olympic, even though he's not, doesn't want to admit it. But yeah, I think barbecue thing might be a lot, might be the one that he moves into next. That's my theory. Barbecue or gun? Our current, it's very hard for the viewer to trust that person because you don't really know who it is. It's all smoke and mirrors. It's one big mystery because one day on this show, he's saying this mm. and another day he's acting like this, but then he said that there and then there's another lie here and the things just don't add up. It's all smoke and mirrors. Mm. And for the viewer, it can probably create a really confusing viewer experience. And I think one of the main things with social media is that you feel like you have a connection with the person that you're watching. And I feel like because of Brendan's maybe a lack of confidence in himself, maybe he doesn't quite know who he truly is, or he feels like he needs to play up to the camera. It can just come off as inauthentic and plasticky and fake. And I That's why I'm interested to know. That's a really good point. So I'm interested to know. I'd wonder what, I'd love to actually listen. That's two people, if I could interview anyone for this show, which is, you know, it doesn't really probably need interviews to do these sort of live streams. But if I could interview anybody on live stream, the number one person I want to interview would be a manager of a comedy club. So I can understand how the, how the money works and the whatever, because I need an explanation. I think the internet needs an explanation behind how Brennan was able to like book so many shows for all those years and then keep canceling, but still keep booking shows at the same venues. Because I said previously before being a DJ myself and playing in fucking bars and clubs around the area that I live in and far flung places around London, the basic premise is if you, if you book a venue to play, and it doesn't go well, more than likely, the club doesn't offer you another date. Or if you want another date, you have to pay more to reserve it and hire it or shit. But usually they won't take the risk. Like if, you, if you're not able to like make the break even, you don't get another date. It's like basically a, you know, it's basically a one, one trial um, affair. If you don't do well or you don't break even, you're out. So I would love to know from a comedy store booker or whatever, how is it that Brendan and other comedians can do that? Can book a show, then cancel last minute and still be able to rebook it another time? Like, why doesn't that change? Now, whatever, I'd love that. The other person I'd love to interview would be a um, a fan of Brendan's. I'd love to unironically interview a fan of Brendan's to find out what is it about Brendan? Because I know what I liked about Brendan in the past. And some of you in the stream chat could also attest to this. What we liked about Brendan in the past is not the same Brendan now. So I'd love to know from a Brendan fan right now what they like about him. What makes them still want to tune in?
What makes him put up with the stuff that he says and not want to turn it off? I'd love to know that. I feel like people don't really like that. I think if he embraced being a more honest, showing who he really is as a person, I feel like people would actually enjoy him. I'm not going to sit here and lie to any of you. I've watched some funny moments clips on mm -hmm. YouTube and the guy, you know, conversationally he can be funny. He can do some things that make you mm. smile and make you chuckle. But those moments are so far and few between. Mm -hmm. It just really doesn't help his case. Yeah. I'll give you an example when I say that people don't really know who he is. If you take his sudden interest and obsession with motors, uh, not motors, but say trucks in particular, he's got his new show way. Motors, big up the UK gang, big up the motors gang. Yeah, he's a bit of a, a bit of UK slang slipped in there, isn't it? Where you got your motor, mate? Hey, where's the motor? Hey, where's your motor? <laughs> I love it. He does up the TRX, right? Now, I'm not saying people can't have spontaneous interests, but where did this come from? Is it because Rogan got his Cybertruck and he's really into cars and motors and Brendan was like, oh, yeah, I guess I'll do that too. For a lot of people... Yeah, that 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 blew my mind. Big up the stream chat. Somebody in the stream chat told me this before, but I didn't know this. So when we first started covering the pickup truck stuff, some in the stream chat pointed me before I saw on before it was it was announced on the forums. I think so. Some in the stream chat said that Rogan actually had a TRX. Rogan's got a TRX. He's had it for a while, and I didn't know that. So that's basically where it's come from. Isn't that crazy? Another one of the things that Brendan just copied off of Rogan. I honestly thought it was one of those things that he. I wouldn't say naturally found. I I thought it was just like a natural progression. He was into supercars. He was into luxury cars and then he got into pickup trucks, right? I just thought it was like a natural kind of like, you know, segue into another thing, especially with his money kind of decreasing, maybe getting into buying like American made cars or buying, you know, pickup trucks for for lack of a better term was a more cost effective way to still keep into that whole like buying of new things thing that he obviously loves because he's a bit of a materialist. Um, but I didn't know that he just copied Rogan. I had no idea before somebody in stream chats told me, no, Rogan actually has a TRX truck. Um, I think even Rogan, no, Rogan had these, I think, done by Hennessy, I think, that Hennessy guy or the Hennessy garage. Um, obviously, Brennan had it done by somebody else, but essentially, like, Rogan was the one that got Brennan into fucking TRX trucks, which is absolutely crazy to think, like, as a grown man, Brendan copies so much of, Ro of Rogan like that. It's just wild. I don't know. Maybe it's because of me. I'm just a little bit of a, I'm, I'm a bit of a prick in that way. Like, if somebody else does something, I will purposely not do it because they're doing it, if you get what I mean. So I just can't imagine somebody who goes out of their way to like, yeah, I do this up because of Rogan. Whatever Rogan does, I do it. Whatever Rogan likes, I like. It's like, <laughs> fucking you know, hell, how can you say that with your, with your chest, man? You're a grown man. People, the dots, they're just not connecting and everything seems to be very spontaneous and very frantic. And his behavior resembles somebody who's lost or maybe isn't comfortable in himself. And I truly, I, I genuinely think this, if he was to embrace just being the most authentic version of himself and that would transfer uh, over camera, I generally do think he could build a pretty strong fan base. <laughs> nah, it's too late. I said this to Matt, Matt, it's too late, brother. It's, no, it's too late, it's over, it's over. <laughs> I I had this i was optimistic at this too but i watched too much brendan it's too late man it's over there is no saving the guy there is no redemption arc there is no come to jesus moment it's over it's done it's done it's finished where the brendan we see now brother he's mid 40s isn't he it's brendan like 42 43 or something like that he's a grown-ass man he has three kids a wife a house like why would he change because of some random people on the internet who he doesn't think about this but about, about this way he looks at us like bugs you know like on a free body problem brendan looks at us like bugs we're peons we are homeless cats basically we're nothing to him we're the scum we're the chewing gum on the bottom of his foot he doesn't respect anybody outside of that group of people that he has his friends especially if people aren't fit don't have money aren't white right he doesn't respect you in the slightest so there is no so for him to learn things he's gonna have to learn the, how to get better and become a better person from people who he doesn't respect as human beings never happening never it's a lost cause just enjoy the fucking shit show I really do. I feel like just because of the lies and the contradictory behavior, he's really shot himself in the foot. And I genuinely think it's a missed opportunity because the little bump that he got from Joe Rogan, he really could have used that to his advantage. So I don't know what it is, but he seems lost. He doesn't seem himself. And most importantly, he doesn't come across as authentic. It wouldn't. Oh, my bad. Um, Joe says, okay, he's 41. Okay, cool. Um, bloody hell, man. He's lived a life in it. Brendan's lived a life in it. He's gone through a lot for just being 41. He's gone through a lot of stuff already. <laughs>
<laughs> he's gone for a lot man he's lived a hell of a life for a 41 year old man fucking hell wouldn't be an honest reflection on brendan's career on social media and stand up comedy if we didn't address uh some of the luck hey uche ban ban the uche ban the rinks ban the rinks for for 61 days or 62 days in represent you know to, to comply with brian callan's the age of age you know um how old a brian is fucking i can't even speak <laughs> the rings deserves a permanent ban for that <laughs> fucking cunts lies that he tells now this was going to be a little bit funny because i saw uh, a video by this youtuber i'll put a picture of him on now yeah, and he yeah, made a point that i i can't tell whether he was joking or not or whether he's being i'm never joking by the way i'm always telling the truth never fucking joking big up big up big up big up another london fixie does this guy have kebab shop wi-fi as well <laughs> bean cheese 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 <laughs> <laughs> Didn't know Cash Cobain had a podcast. Cash Much Cobain, love. Yeah, it's hilarious. Yeah, big up skate things. Uh, big up skate things, and big up Wingus McDingus kebab. Show. No, he he definitely has much better Wi-Fi than my, Wi-Fi than I do, and he definitely has a better backdrop than I do. I've got this fucking makeshift IKEA shelf that I'm sitting in the corner. I'm sitting at the end of, with with way too many books on it. It's probably going to fall over sometime soon. And he has a way better YouTuber. Like you can tell, he's setting up to become a YouTuber. You know, my stuff just looks like I've just, I don't know, I'm pitched up on my table at my friend's house. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> I'm sleeping on my friend's couch. I just decided just to stream. He looks like he's decide. He's like you know, he's got a direction in mind. He's got his gamer chair. He's got a nice desk. He's got stuff. You know what I mean? Like. He's, he knows what he's doing. I don't. So follow Matty D. Follow Matty D. Don't follow me. Being serious. I think he was being serious. But what he was saying is that he genuinely doesn't think that Brendan remembers the things that he's saying. I don't think Brendan thinks he's lying. There's me. I think he's that redacted. He's that regarded. He actually doesn't remember all these clips. He has no memory of these pictures of these instances i don't actually think he's lying okay and just hear me out i don't know how people do this man it's so cringy hearing myself on stream like this i don't get how brendan could sit there and just laugh. brendan will sit there and look at himself and maniacally laugh at his own fucking videos on instagram i can't even i can just about make edits quickly edits are horrible making little clips on my on my fucking youtube you have to listen to yourself speaking like fucking shut the fuck up man you're always fucking talking do you know what i mean it's like it's so it's so excruciating to do that's why i understand people why they have editors i understand how people have editors to outsource stuff because it's so horrible to keep listening to yourself it's bad enough that i hear, can hear myself speaking sometimes but then to hear yourself speaking and then to hear this like i've got this like voice inflection thing going on where i like think i'm saying something funny it's like he thinks maybe it's like i sound like a fucking bitch you know what i mean i hate it i fucking hate it <laughs> but big up matty d yeah, because I, I put a little bit of stock into this. I don't know whether it's the CT or the continuous blows in the head from his UFC days. When you guys catch Brendan in lies, I, I genuinely do not think he re he remembers the things that he says. Who knows? Maybe we shouldn't be so harsh on him. Maybe maybe the CT is catching up with him. Of course, it's not. You know, CT isn't funny in that, but um, it's just now nah, CT is is funny. CT is definitely funny because CT is like a is like is also a, especially in fighters nowadays. It's more of a demonstration of like your inability to like not get hit, your refusal to like block, your refusal to have any sort of like defensive game. You're just all offense. You don't think you need it. You think you can just block punches with your head. It's fucking hilarious. I don't care. It's absolutely hilarious. CTE. It's one of the most hilarious things I ever see. People with full blown CTE trying to navigate everyday life. I fucking love it. Something that I found amusing. Oh, his comedy career. Oh boy. Now I have a take here that I, I wouldn't say it's controversial. I think it's pretty much common knowledge, but I think Brendan's career in stand up was kind of doomed from the start. And I mean that not in terms of- By the way, this is the point that I love the most about his. This is the best point I think he's he's made in this video and definitely something I've not heard people say, but I've, I really co-signed this point. I really, really co-signed this.
Pogba's technical ability. Well, that as well, but we'll get into that in a minute. I think that his rise in stand-up comedy, it was doomed to fail. Like, it was dead on arrival. Think about it. You have this bump from Joe Rogan. You have all of these fans, all of this attention. Plus, you have other comics in the industry who are, you know, trashing you, saying, oh, this is, you know, only his first year in stand-up comedy and he's already got a special. You know, who does that? I feel like there was too much expectation. There was too much noise. There was too much pressure. Even if Brendan was the best stand-up comedian on the entire planet. That first special, re regardless of his ability, it would have been underwhelming because if there was so much expectation, there was so much noise around it. I just, I can't see how anybody could possibly deliver on something like that. Bear in mind that I think, you know, in order for you as a stand-up comedian to get a special, you have to be like, what, like maybe like, five ten years into the game and think that brendan released his special i think within the first year obviously he's going to rub people up the wrong way and i think the biggest problem there is his inexperience he didn't take the time to work on his craft if you take somebody who's been training for a year or they've had one fight in the ufc and they're like yeah you're going to be fine for the championship next week it's like well what what about all the other people people have put in 10 15 20 years I think this guy has just walked in because he's had a little bump from joe rogan and he's got a special all of a sudden definitely didn't help his case I that's a great point you made about the ufc that analogy about the ufc is really good because the analogy of the ufc is good because what it does is demonstrate where brennan went wrong because i don't think it's a bad thing for you to be like a year into your training imagine you started training mixed martial arts and in your gym somebody realized oh shit you've got something you, you got something you could actually be professional if you tried and then a year in to you know and then from starting a year in they're like you know what we're going to put you forward to getting signed by the ufc the problem isn't you just the problem isn't you signing for the ufc after a year the problem is you assuming you should be fighting on the main card at one of the big ufc events and stuff if you fight on a fight night on an on a prelim card on an early prelim card that's all good that's you purposely taking a slow route to actually building yourself up to then becoming a proper main card fighter the the thing that brendan did bad is that he got the showtime deal and it immediately gave him like a stamp of approval that he was a legit stand-up comedian he didn't even try like because when you do specials from what i've heard on from comedians you can decide where they're filmed. You can film them in a comedy club. You can go film them in a fucking outdoor arena. You can film them in a parking lot. You decide where you want to film it. So you go into a theater is like, I guess in the standard comedy world, it's like a sign of where you're at, the level, right? And obviously you want that big pan shot with a sold out crowd. But if he wanted to, Brenda could have easily filmed that first special in a comedy club. And like, oh, here's my first special for fucking Showtime. A collection of jokes from like my two and a half years of stand up. It completely presents a different tone it's it's a different lens that way you look through it but he did that stand-up special and the way he carried himself and the way he presented himself was like yeah i've arrived i'm the big dog i didn't i didn't need five to ten years i just needed a year and look at where i'm at look how amazing i am and then you listen to the pod you listen to the stand-up special and it's fucking horrible i also don't buy and i also will contest and push back on this narrative that all of these fucking comedians throw out there about you needing to be 10 years in like 10 years is a magical fucking number there is no amount of years that you need in to become funny no to have a special either you're funny or you're not obviously the 10 year thing is more of an arbitrary number because it represents like a time scale of how long you've been practicing hopefully and going off for spots but you also have to assume in my opinion this is just my opinion please don't kill me for this but i also don't believe that these stand-up comedians get up as much as they say they do i don't believe it i think the majority of them just do their shows for their fans they chill at home whatever but i don't think they actually write jokes they actually go on stage stages that aren't theirs on the weekly basis i don't believe it maybe in the beginning they did but they don't so if if that's the case then how much funnier are you getting really if you're just performing to your home crowd and you're not writing that often and you don't get up that often anyway how much funnier are you really getting so that whole 10 year five year thing is bullshit if anything if you're a stand-up comedian just keep honing your craft keep working at it keep performing in kind of audiences that aren't yours and most likely you will know you will have a feeling or your friends will tell you when you're ready to then decide to start filming specials or whatever it may be you will know when that time is where maybe you get bored of your material blah 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 but the idea that it should be this number these years fuck off that's that just gives these guys like the out the cope of like oh yeah you've been working this long i must be awesome no motherfucker did you make me laugh yes or no and most of these guys can't make people laugh because guess what they're not funny i do wonder though and let me know down in the comments below if you think brendan's career his comedy career in particular could have been very very different because there is a small part of 
Robert Robert Mi Robert Minnes. Robert Minnes, thank you so much, friend. That's one of the only nice comments I get in this fucking stream chat. I have people fucking taking the piss out of my microphone, saying, oh, I wonder if this guy has shitty, shitty kebab Wi-Fi like Aggie. I wonder if his microphone... All you guys mocking and insulting me. But Brendan Minnes is the only person that's being nice to me in the stream chat. He says, AZ, the stream is looking crisp and clean. Big ups. Big up to you too. Thank you for the kind words, okay? That means a lot, all right? That means a lot. For a black man like myself, an immigrant somebody from a poor neighborhood, somebody that didn't have much, right? Somebody had to fucking, you know, rub rocks together to create fucking, you know, to have fucking shampoo to put in my hair. A guy that used to fucking had to, you know, light a candle to do my homework on the fucking dinner table, not the dinner table on the stairs because we didn't have a fucking table. It's nice to hear that. Honestly, it's nice to hear that. I need that. As a person of color, as an immigrant, as, um, as, a, as a poor, I need that sort of love. So thank you, Robert Minnis. And fuck the rest of the stream chat that keep insulting me, okay? <laughs> of me, a small percentage that thinks just for a moment, could things have been different if Brendan maybe, if he came up more organically, if he came up through the system properly, if he had maybe five, ten years in the game and then he made his his first special? I do wonder if his comedy career would have been different. Would he have been funnier? Would he get the hate that he's getting now? All these questions run through my head. Yeah, I think it's an interesting thing to think about so do let me know in the comments down below look so big up matty d appreciate you big up make sure you subscribe to his channel he's fucking cool that's his channel there check him out give him some love matty d get his fucking subscribers up help the light out he's fucking funny i like it i really 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 fucking like it